Let's talk some college football. I am joined by the head football coach at Boise State. 84-8 and eight in their past seven years there. He has led the Broncos to two unbeaten seasons and BCS Bowl wins. He was the 2010 Coach of the Year. Boise State, 11-2 and two last year. They open up their season at Washington on August 31st. I'm joined by head coach Chris Peterson. Chris, always nice to talk to you. How are you? Doing good, Jim. Thanks for having me on. It's good to have you back, Chris. Thank you. Here we are late July. You're about five weeks away from the season opener at Washington. Give me an idea, Chris. What are your days like right now? Are you completely locked in in football, or are you trying to enjoy the last few moments of the summer before the real grind begins? Yeah, we're we're pretty locked in now. We just got back the other day, and uh, you know, it's a, I think as a football coach, it's a love it's a love hate relationship. You know, you got you got the season just hanging on you, and everybody's depressed that they're coming off vacation. But then on the other hand, it's then you just you flip the switch and you say, okay, it's time. We just we I think every coach in America right now just can't wait to get back out on the field. It's it's time. Everybody understands go time. All right, so last season, Chris, you had to replace six guys who were drafted. You still managed to go 11-2. and two. You were ranked number 14 in the coaches' poll. Now, that might have been the lowest you had been ranked in a while, but given what you had to replace and come back from, how satisfying was last season? Last year was probably as satisfying a season as we've had in a long time around here. And it was really because, starting with what you said, we lost a lot of good players, some, some NFL guys. We had you know, six guys drafted, and then we had some free agents. And then we lost some really good just college football players. So we really did have a lot to, to replace. And then we, kinda, we get off to a slow start uh, offensively the first couple games. And it was painful because we're not used to getting uh, off the slow starts around here offensively. But really, to the kids' credit and to our quarterback, Joe Southwick's credit, just continually worked. And, you know, there was a lot of outside noise, uh, you know, banging on us and these kids. And just really, they didn't let it distract them, and they got better. And I think that at the end of the day, as a coach, as a teacher, you know, any anybody that's affiliated with helping people get better, when they are getting better, it's really satisfying. Boise State football coach Chris Peterson joining us. So where does that leave you this year in the sense that you only return 10 starting players, but Joe Southwick is back at quarterback. You've got some strong pieces on the offensive line. Your top two receivers are back. Do you have a sense yet then how good this team can be? No, we don't. And it's weird because last year we went through all this big overhaul with all these new guys. But what happened last year is we had a lot of seniors that hadn't maybe had significant playing time, had been involved in the game plans, but really weren't starters. And so many of these seniors stepped up and played really well. Well, we're kind of back to the same thing. So those guys graduated. Every one of our seniors last year just did a great job of c- contributing somehow, some way. And so we're, we're back to that again. I think we're going to have to have more new guys slash young guys step up than we've ever had. And then we got a, you know, that coupled, we've got a really, really challenging, we really have a challenging schedule. We play five, I think we have six road games, and five of those, are, all those teams either won their league, shared their league, went to a bowl game, and they're all on the road. And so this, this will be a really, really challenging uh, season just with who we got coming back and, and, and really our road schedule. All right, so let's stay on that point for a minute. In the past, big schools have been reluctant to schedule home and homes with you, but in the next few years, you're adding Virginia, Florida State, Oklahoma State to the schedule. What does that say about your program and then college football in general? Yeah, it's, it's interesting. You can kind of feel it change a little bit. Um, you know, we're, 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 we've played some last handful of years some really big openers and um, you can start to feel some of these other teams really wanting to do that we we would love to play more of these openers in our stadium we seem to have to go other places but you know it's changing I mean, I mean teams are wanting to play other teams and uh, you know I think for as the new playoff system comes about I think that's one of the reasons and so you can kind of feel some scheduling philosophy changing when you look closely at some people Boise State head coach Chris Peterson joining us. All right, so in terms of the playoff system, you've got a four-team playoff, which is coming in in 2014. What do you make of that playoff system as it's currently designed? Do you like it? Well, it's a start, and I think everybody, you know, starting with the fans, like the start. I mean, everybody wants to see some sort of playoff system. I think from our standpoint, we'd love to see an eight-team playoff you know, ASAP. And really down the road, I mean, what makes sense is you'd love to see some sort of 16-team playoff, but, you know, nobody knows how to get that done just yet. The one thing that I do know that I think everybody knows 
is if you were able to get that 16-team playoff done, you'd have to cut down some of your regular season because it'd be just too much playing for, for these college kids. But there'd be more than enough money for everybody to go around. You know, certainly four is better than none. Do you think four, does it give a program like yours a better chance to win it all, or do you feel like it's still skewed towards the current BCS conferences? Well, it's interesting because whether you're talking about the BCS or now a four-team playoff, for whatever reason, it seems like Boise State's always the team that everybody wants to talk about. Is this going to be fair for these guys? And this is what I've said all along about the BCS, is that, hey, if we take care of our business If we do what we need to do, that system worked out okay for us, even though they were always talking about, is it fair for us? But it it had been when we did what we needed to do. We're really counting that the same thing will happen with this tournament. I mean, if we, hey, we may need to, you know, you may have to win all your games here at Boise State to get in, get into a tournament like that. Well, it is what it is, and so, uh, you know, let let's try to put together a good team and and do some things. And if you can, then I think it'll be fair to us. But uh, at least it's a start. Yeah, Chris, like you said, four is good, eight would be better, but considering how long it took to get to four, how long do you think it will take to get to eight? Yeah, that's a good question. Hopefully not as long as it took to get to four. I mean, now there's a little momentum going. I think if it's, you know, has the the excitement that everybody thinks it's going to have, I mean, I, I think people will figure it out very quickly. It's like, well, if four is generating that much interest and money and excitement, hey, can we not make this work to eight pretty quickly? And so I... You know, ho- hopefully the four goes really well, and like everybody hopes, and then around the corner, hopefully here comes eight. All right, so we got a few minutes left. We talked scheduling. Let's talk recruiting for a minute. As Boise State's profile grows, are you able to tap into a bigger talent pool? For instance, does it make recruiting easier, or do you get the sense that other programs are now watching you, and when you offer somebody, do they then jump in? Oh, yeah, M- much harder. No question about it. I mean, there's there's no, I don't want to say sneaking anybody out because that's not what we thought we were doing. But you know, we'll 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 offer guys that have no offers, and then a couple weeks later, you got a lot of offers. And just with the you know the internet and all those things and all the scouting services that everybody pays attention, fans and coaches alike, it definitely makes it more competitive and and harder. There's just there's. Uh, you know, it can be frustrating in some ways. You feel like, you know, there's, I don't know, some copycats out there. But it is what it is. And, hey, we just got to keep focusing on ourselves and doing the best job we can. Hey, Chris, speaking of the Internet, you know, back in 2010, you said, I don't want my guys tweeting. And I've had a lot of coaches say, look, it is what it is. And the world has changed. And these kids have grown up on this sort of thing. You really have not changed your policy on this. Do your players want to tweet or do they just know that it's not a possibility? They, it really doesn't come up around here. They get that. I still believe strongly in that just because I think it's, you know, it can be emotional and all of a sudden they hit that send button and five minutes later they're going, oh, there's so many other forms of, you know, the the, the media out there. I mean, they, I think they're scared to death that we're going to take away Instagram and Facebook and Vine and all those other things. And so they don't really say a word about about Twitter be, because it's it, it's so much the same. And so the important thing is there are a lot of other social media out there that our kids do use, and they do know if they're not smart and careful with it, well, that may go away as well because it's a privilege to be here. It's a privilege to play college football. And if you're not doing it the right way and really representing certainly this university, your family, and the rest of your teammates the way they need to be represented, then you, then you don't need to be on that stuff. Now, Chris, what about you? You have a verified official account that has exactly zero tweets. I know a lot of coaches that feel <laughs> stronger that it's followers. a big recruiting tool, but you don't think so. You don't. You feel like you're missing any recruiting opportunities by not using it? You know what? So I don't. Um, we're, we're on, a, you know, the Facebook, and um, a, our assistants are on Twitter following kids, and so I get all that information through those guys. I mean, the bottom line is, is you know, we want to talk to these kids on. I want to talk to them on the phone. They don't. They'd rather talk to us through social media, but if they're serious in Boise State, they'll get on the phone. They'll come up here and see us, and that seems to work, uh, you know, well for us. I pay close attention to it, and really, you know, ask myself: Is this hurting us in our program by me not doing that? And if I thought it would at all, I would certainly get on it. But I just, I, I'm not thinking that it it, it does. You see, the thing is, I mean, I'm looking at what you're doing, and clearly what you're doing is working very, very well. But I wonder if a kid were to get a DM, a direct message from Coach Chris Peterson, I would imagine that'd be pretty cool. Well, 
real shortly he's going to get a direct phone call from me when it's, <laughs> when it's legal for me to call. So I think that's better than the direct messaging. Uh, I was going to say that would be even better. I would have to agree with you. Chris Peterson, my guest, Boise State head coach, getting ready for their opener. It's August 31st against Washington. Chris, great to have you back. Thank you very much. All right, Jim. Appreciate you taking care of the Broncos. You got good talking to you. That's really really interesting to me because you've got so many coaches that are saying this is the world in which we live. These kids grew up on this sort of thing. This is what they do, and we're going to embrace that, and we're going to understand it, and we'll use it responsibly. And Chris Peterson's always said, I'm about OKG. OKG, our kind of guy. He goes, yeah, I bet that would be cool. I mean, what a great answer that was. That probably would be pretty cool to get a direct message, but you know what? He's about to get a direct phone call from me, and I think that's better.